quite one fourth and never just half, but the entirety of one primate, whole. It is the part of a story, an idea that means more to you than me. Hello and welcome to Full Gorilla Life. We are Jeremy Keene, Larry Medina, and Corey Hewlings. Each week, we will break down an important life concept or talk with an inspiring person so that you can live your full gorilla life. Hello, everybody. Uh, Welcome back to another episode of Full Gorilla Life. We are here now with Wendy and Rob, the owners of Vero Strength and Conditioning. Hello. Welcome. Glad to have you guys in. Thanks Um, for having us. Oh, Welcome. we're excited. Um, we've, we're still new at this game, so we're kind of just having a, a conversation. So wherever it goes, we let it go, and we'd like to have a lot of fun with that. But um, we'll let you guys start on your end, and if you can give us some of the background on your gym and kind of how you got to the point, how long you've been open. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we'll start with the facility to open it. In about 2007, we started seeing some information online called CrossFit. And a lot of fighters, different MMA guys, the boxers were doing it. There was no facilities anywhere we were looking at it. It was in a training style that we were kind of doing already before then. As time was going on, we were paying more attention, bought equipment, started doing it a little bit. And then it started getting a little more in popularity. Got a facility in Sebastian opened up. We started going there. And that was in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of went from there. Yeah, I, I sort of remember that, um, actually, because I remember thinking, you guys are getting up at 5 in the morning. We were there at 5 in the morning. I remember, because so, yeah. you guys pushed them to actually open up earlier. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right? Because they're starting at like 6, and Robin, when you're like, no, this is too late. But we <laughs> always, I mean, I've always trained in the morning, which I don't love it at all. Okay. And but I, can, I get up early and get it done. I can attest to that, because I used to yeah. drive to the Jungle Club. To meet him at like four, and it was ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. We would drive to Sebastian, do the they would do the CrossFit workout of the day, which sometimes was just a lift, just really mm-hmm. simple. And then we would drive all the way to South Vero to either Anytime Fitness or Jungle Club and do our rest of our workout. The rest of it, yeah. really? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. it was very different in the beginning. And when it first came out, I kind of took a look at it and broke it down and questioned it a little bit. But I thought it was a like a good program to put with some different type of strength training or accessory work. And as time went on, like obviously you evolve and training evolves, but we started to jump into it more and started letting some of the other stuff go. And over the years, I'm kind of doing it the way I did it in the beginning. Yeah, I think really? the yes. became a sport. Um, mm-hmm. and, really? You know, yes. People like that feeling of being in the pool of sweat and giving it all they got. Um, you know, that became popular. So that's what everybody associated with it. And we did, you know, some of that as well. And we had a lot of competitive athletes at our gym. But then over time, especially as we've gotten older, you want to train differently mm-hmm. and uh, a lot smarter. Yeah. So I can tell you from experience, right? Um, <laughs> ba- ba- back, back. You guys have been doing it for a long we, time. Yeah. yeah, well. we, with, yeah. Uh, uh, kind 08. of, right? We started about 08 <laughs> so, as well. So, yeah. But we have been away from it a little while now. Yeah. That, that, that's and, and, that, and that's what I meant was we kind of got away from it. Uh, we started up back in 08 as well. We got certified around the same time. Yeah. I think I, you guys, I, when did you guys get certified? Right? At the end of 2008. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're the summer of 08. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right around the same time we, um, and having said that to your point, we actually loved the aspect of being in a pool of sweat, et cetera. The downside was uh, something that I didn't realize, but I realize this now. So if I could go back, I would do it differently. Kind of probably what you, what you're, what you're doing now, because I'm a desk jockey mm-hmm. all day. I'm sitting in front of a desk. I work in front of a computer and then I would go get a workout in and in my workout, I wouldn't even warm up. I would, I would kind of warm up, but I would just kind of go full gorilla. The yeah, worst thing to do. Yeah. We did not warm exactly. up. We, he would, we would show up at one of our houses and we would, we talk. would talk for a minute while we <laughs> quote unquote warmed up and make our workout in the moment, which we actually liked doing that. Like what's sore, what's not, what do we not hit? So it was, there was some structure to it, but it, and they were like, all right, let's go. Yeah, but one and then so that's where it hit us later, and we realized going back now that was stupid. There's a lot more that we weren't doing. You can't play, be in the pool of sweat like you said daily. There's, well, I'm not trying to defend you guys. There's a science behind, but it. there was a, like a big push for that ready state. 
to be ready at any time for the first responders and point. the special Why? operations. You, you defend us. That's fine. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and a lot of people were pushing towards that. But it's a big difference between someone that's overseas and needs to be ready all the time and compared to the everyday person in over 10 years of doing that. Mm-hmm. And that's where you start seeing all the problems come out. Yeah. Well, one thing that stuck with me is one thing that you told me is, um, Rob, because people can't see me pointing at you, Rob. Yeah. But one thing that always stuck with me was um, when, I, when I was talking to you one day about joining a gym, you said, definitely do it. Come on board. Um, I've been really bad about doing that. But one thing that, that, that you told me was everybody needs a coach. And that's 100% true. Mm-hmm. 100% true. That's something that, for whatever reason, it just stuck with me. I do agree with that. So now I just don't do anything. But, <laughs> but if I could, I, you know, or if I, I should, um, I agree with that philosophy because honestly, that's what ended up making me break down quote unquote, right. Um, and getting back into the process of getting better. Yeah, a lot of times coaches, a, a lot of times have more experience than you and that's what you're going to them for. They've already done it. They've already figured it out ahead of time. I'm just trying to save you from yeah. yourself, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they've done it. And then on top of that, they get to um, see you and see your deficiencies cool. where, like, I don't get to pull myself out of myself and look at me and be like, yeah, what are you doing? So back in 2008, you guys were still working. You didn't own a gym at that point. Or you no, own? Okay. Not own a gym. So you're just going to Sebastian's CrossFit, CrossFit right. in the morning and then you're doing your regular workout because you guys are fitness, like, gurus. Correct. Yes. Um, so are you guys working together or separate jobs or? Yeah, I was, um, I have an education in advertising marketing and worked in that field for about 15 years. And the gym came about as kind of like, all right, let's see where this goes. It's going to be mainly our friends. And then it just blew up. I mean, we were a thousand square feet and now we're around 9,000. So it, it, it yeah. grew over the years. Um, five years into it, I decided I can't give a hundred percent of myself to both jobs. So I'll, I'll go full time with the gym. Uh, Rob very quickly uh, sold his current business and, and dedicated himself to the gym right away. Okay. But at the time it was hard to find anyone that was CrossFit certified in terms of coaches in town. Yeah. So we were, so you would hire just about anybody at that point. No, well, we, we kind of, we, they, we do have, <laughs> we asked for some help. We, we asked for some help. Standards, so. A couple of Saturdays. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Just we for, were, I was, you know, getting up in the morning, working out, working, coming back to coach, um, you know, and just, so you got into the gym a hundred percent right away then Rob. Yeah. So like a little bit, like a, I'll, I'll backtrack real quick. My background, since I've been about 14, 15 years old, I was heavy duty in the training. And I never did it as a profession, but I was always the guy that was at the facility that the trainers would ask for info. And people always told me to do it. I just never wanted to do it for a job. I got so you. I was always leery about it. And then the opportunity came up, and then that's when we decided to jump into it. So now that you're doing it uh, full time, both of you, is it still like your true passion and purpose then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know he was hesitant because he thought he would lose his love of, of training. The passion for exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. But um, I think there's always new methods. There's always education. He had, you know, He's the, the movement guy. I'm kind of more behind the scenes. I still coach. Um, I'm, my strengths lie in more mindset, nutrition, and those lifestyle factors. Um, but, yeah, there's, it's, there's, it's a passion in, in your – you're around people all the time. And I mean, it's cliche. We get to help people, but it's very true. It's very true. I think it being your own business too is a big difference yeah. because if you went to work for somebody as a trainer, I think that's a completely different thing. I know from being a fabricator and a mechanic, if I go work at a garage and I'm not building hot rods, what I want to do, what I, you know, I want this piece of art out there that people can look at and be like, Oh, that's so cool. That's a passion for me. But if I would go to work for somebody and, change transmissions or clutches or brakes every day that would take away my passion of the job. So I I think there's something to be said when it's your own baby and you get to do, when you wake up, you get to change the direction of your gym. If you see, you know, better training and better research. Definitely. I mean, it is a job and it does have in a business and it has all the issues that they, that, uh, that, that they do, but it's your own. Yeah. Well, and if you have that passion, it shows through, you know, that you can't, you can't fake that. You know, when you come into any place of business, whether it's photography or gym 
or a bar, if somebody has a passion that owns it, that is there, I mean, you can't fake that. When you walk in, you know it. And that says something going from 1,000 square feet to 9,000 square feet to probably, I don't know how many clients the first year to however many you have now. I mean, that's had to be exponential to go that many route, that route. Um, what, going back to that moment where you went full in, what was the tipping point? Like, what made you say, let's do it? I know you've always been into fitness and you were kind of hesitant, but then together you're like, let's just go for it. What was the tipping point there? Working two jobs, like 12 hours. In. No, what, what actually that, happened? That was, might be it. That yeah. And, be it, and so. it was a part of it. But the, what happened was, I think we ran off of adrenaline for the first six months. We'd get up at like three o'clock, work out ourselves, train people, go to work, come back, train people again. Mm -hmm. But the construction market was starting to leave. And that was part of what we owned was a construction waste company. And we saw the opportunity to get out of it and then focus on something that I really wanted to. And finally got into something that everybody's been asking me to. And I thought about doing it for a long time. That's kind of how it happened. Right on. Cool. Yeah, no, that, that that's really interesting. So, um, circumstances more than anything. Yeah, no. It, so it's almost like perfect timing, but obviously you, you still had to make that leap yeah. and, and make that happen. Right. Um, so then you're continuing to work. You're, you're in the marketing, uh, advertising business. Mm -hmm. Uh, how long did it take you doing both jobs? Five years. And hers was, I think the scariest leap. For yeah. Us. Cause we were able to, um, you know, rely on my paycheck to, you know, for you had a backup plan. So exactly. To speak. And then, um, evolve the gym, invest in more equipment, you know, that sort of thing and really grow it until, it, you know, we knew it was time. So 15 years you did training prior to CrossFit. Correct. Uh, what, what was your background in? I played high school sports just, you know, like everyone else, I'm track and volleyball. I was into volleyball. Um, didn't play anything in college. And then after college, just kind of got back into fitness, uh, ran a marathon, uh, did obstacle course, uh, competitions. Okay. And that's kind of how I found CrossFit, just looking for different training plans and that sort of thing online. Um, and then ended up becoming a, a CrossFit athlete for quite some time. Yeah. So let's talk about that, right? Cause both of you guys were actually CrossFit athletes. Really? Yes. Yeah. And, um, I remember when it first started to have the sectionals and that was awesome. I wish that would come back. Right. Yeah, we, yeah. Um, well, when it first started, it was just a big regional. Yes. And you didn't have to qualify. You just, you just showed, showed up. up. That's right. That's how small it yeah. was. Yeah. That's right. That was the one that we went to down in West Palm that one time. That was a sectional. That was a sectional. That right. was that a was, couple yeah. of in. Yeah. 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 That was fun. That was fun. And then the we're, following we're year horrible. was sectionals <laughs> to regionals, and then it just became straight to regionals <laughs> yeah. Yeah. via yeah. the online qualifier. Let's get rid of these other these yeah. hacks. Yeah. We're going to skip sectionals. Yeah. Yeah. Both of you guys made it to regionals, right? Um, she's made it. I was just always on the sideline holding her stuff. Okay. Hey, you're still there. Yeah. I tried. Five, five, five years at regionals. The last year was, um, I was 39 and it was my last year before I became a master's athlete. So I was the oldest one there. So <laughs> do you guys still compete or no? No. Um, no, we'll do the open with your, with, yeah. like, with the box and, and everything. See what happens, but I don't, yeah. we don't go around and kind of, do you push your athletes to try it? No, we don't okay. put a lot of emphasis on the open. Um, because I think a lot of times people want to achieve things they're not ready for. I mean, mm -hmm. you'll see videos all over online of people getting their first bar muscle up, but it's all chicken winged and you're afraid they're going to pull their peck or whatever. Um, we just, we don't put a, a big emphasis on those type of PRs just to get it done or one rep maxes or things like that because the average person doesn't really need to do that. And for the layman, what is the open? The uh, CrossFit Open is a worldwide online event. So CrossFit over five weeks will release one event per week. And then you'll, these gyms all over the world will do that same event. And you log your scores online. The gym, so in my case, it would be me, uh, verifies the scores. And then it ranks athletes uh, worldwide. So worldwide. you learn where okay. you're at really quick. Okay. So you know, a couple low, hundred always. thousand people will do it <laughs> really every quick. Year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember looking what I would do. I was like, where's Rob? Where's Wendy? Oh, I'm not even um, close. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought I was at that time. No, I wasn't anything, but I thought I was in fairly good shape, but I yeah, was never I mean, that level. In, in relative terms, I was right? exactly what you said. I was for me, for your everyday person, I was in a good place. Yeah. 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 Minus yeah. the warm ups, but it was very different in the beginning. And one of the things we don't push the competition part at all, even though we, we have done it, we have had fun with it and we're kind of out of it now is CrossFit and 
for competition is very different than for health and wellness. Like and I was, that's yeah. totally two different things. And people kind of like muddled that for like many years and made a mistake. And a lot of people paid the price for that. I was going to ask you, cause you did it for five years. You said, right. For that. Yeah, I did. Uh, I was regional for five years. And then my first, when I was 40, when I turned 40, I really wanted to make a run for the games. And I mm-hmm. think I ended up like 30, 30th worldwide or something like that. I, yeah. I remember and it was the yeah. top 20 that were going, but were, I had to train. Close. I had a great coach. Um, but you have to do things even if you're hurting just to, just to keep the level that you've gotten to. Well, right. to get the volume in to be able to handle the workouts that are coming out and be able to put the performance up, you're way past like health and wellness. And like we were both mm-hmm. competing that year in the 40 and we both made the master qualifier and trying to get your body to push that hard. You start breaking down. And that's an important message to hear because like you said, people go and they see it. Oh, and it's for everybody. The opens worldwide. And I did the same thing and I went in all, all in and I'm paying the price with certain ailments, nothing major. I could still get through them, but I was curious of how much just the, did you lose some of the passion over those five years? Cause you kept striving for it. Was it more of the competitive side of it or was it still that you just truly wanted it inside? Yeah, I truly wanted it. And, and to me, regionals was the goal. It wasn't, I never had aspirations for the games, um, when I was, you know, not in masters and then just my priorities shifted. I wanted yeah. to be comfortable when I slept at night and, you know, <laughs> um, that's, that's kind so of important. important. Yeah. yeah. And you have a little bit more of a life and so going to the evolution of fitness mm-hmm. and where you guys started with the CrossFit kind of focus and trying to blend in the other pieces that you guys talked about, um, you've had to change some things. You've had to add. You've had to market yourself in different ways. Do you want to talk a little bit about where you were with just probably more CrossFit with the strength piece, but now you have multiple programs and, and things? that. Yeah, I think we were we, – we rebranded and, and renamed our gym um, – to not have the, the CrossFit moniker mm-hmm. you know, leading with that about three years ago. And we were kind of tired of hearing about someone's cousin in, you know, Iowa that got hurt at CrossFit and, and just yeah. kind of being lumped into the CrossFit name. And there's great, just like there's great doctors, lawyers, and there's not so great, there's great gyms and not, not so great, but CrossFit, the name had a negative connotation. So, um, we changed to Vera strength and conditioning we added a, a cardio centric type programs like resistance, but, um, a little less technical. And, um, from there we've, it's, you know, spawned some other programs. So that was one of the reasons. And it, it just didn't reflect who we were and, and the training principles that we were putting out. So did you get any like, like blowback from changing we, the name? We had a town hall meeting with our, with our members okay. because a lot of them are very rabid CrossFit yeah, I was say there's a lot of passion yes. in that community. They're there proud is, and to that's call a part of the problem. Crossfitters. Yeah, isn't right. it like that? It's that part of the problem. That meme that you know, the first rule of CrossFit, you have to let everybody yeah. know you do CrossFit. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 <laughs> just like you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's so many people that identify with that, and that was one of the goals to for the facility is we use principles of CrossFit and principles of other different strength methods. But I didn't want them to identify with that itself because that's like like a hardcore audience, Mm -hmm. the people that really identify with it. And the approach that they take is not the most intelligent approach to it a lot of times. And so we kind of like little by little, we're moving away from it and showing people. It took a little while, but everybody started understanding it. And the people that questioned the most are the ones that love it. The most more now, now. Yeah. they've fallen more. And less. we have members that have been there over 10 years. I mean, since day one and they're wow. in their fifties, sixties, you know, so if we were just doing this throwdown every day, they would never have lasted. Agreed. Yeah. What do you think of those people that say like, Oh, I, I need to get in shape to go see a gym. Like, cause I, I, I used to hear that all the time and, and I know my take, but I want to get your perspective. I get it. Yeah. But I think that if they, especially if they're coming to our gym, they're just prolonging proper movement patterns. Cause you could go do a boot camp and you're moving for the sake of moving. But you know, when you come to our gym, you're getting a full assessment. Are you hinging correctly? You know, you're do different, um, push, pull squat type, you know, movements to see where your deficiencies are. And you work on that before you enter the class and you would have wasted all that time 
not getting an education you have an, process. Like, do you have like an on-ramp do. class to get them? It's or? all personals. Okay, so yeah. it goes personals oh, wow. until yeah. they're ready to be released into a group. There's a whole assessment that comes in to see the deficiencies. We won't know where you're at until we are get, kind of like almost get our hands on you and see. And then from there, then we're going to be able to tell you how long it's going to be able to come in there. So go, no, you go ahead. No, no, so if I was to go, you know, or whoever, right, somebody off the streets go, comes into your gym, they have to go through an assessment first before they can actually join the, the class. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. That is very... Before sh- they go through an assessment, then they go through one-on-one personal sessions before they even come in. So by the time they come in, they're comfortable and the coach is comfortable about releasing them. And sometimes people aren't comfortable, even though the coach might feel it and they ask to do more. Or sometimes the coach suggests, is like, hey, you should do a couple of more. And we kind of like soft bring them on maybe mm-hmm. only on aerobic days that there's no technical moves in and stuff like that. But that's how it works. And with we us. always have an alternate workout for yeah. what's going on. And, uh, we have a lot of people that they should never snatch. It'll cause a shoulder injury. They should never do pull-ups. Um, at least not kipping pull-ups. So they know their modifications and they can always use dumbbells instead of barbells. They can still get a, a, the stimulus mm-hmm. we're looking for. And everybody knows that. And everybody, you know, kind of understands their modifications or asks questions and it's very hands-on even and in a class. It sound, it's not, cause it sounds like you've developed like the culture there where everybody's comfortable. It's okay if I can't use the barbell. I can go. So that's, Correct, but you start that from the beginning. Yes. That's very and important. The scaling that's like was kind of out there and everybody's like, Oh, it's definitely scalable. Like that, it that's doesn't not work the same. properly. It's it not, just doesn't. You guys have more, yeah. you've individualized that I think even more so by yep. doing that end of it. That's yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and a lot of coaching is like, giving people power of knowledge and how to take care of themselves. And mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing is them able to take care of themselves in case they go away or somewhere else. They know exactly what to do CrossFit or hotel gym, whatever they do, which some people would be scared of because you don't have to be so efficient. They don't need you anymore. Right. But yeah. that's good that you are still want to empower them to that point. Well, that's extremely smart. And it speaks to you talking about everybody needing a coach or Larry saying, that's what you said. You know, everybody needs a coach. And I, I truly believe that too. And I can speak from personal experience, trying CrossFit for the first time, not working out for six months and thinking that I could keep up with Larry, who See, was in his prime at that point. Yeah. However high or low that might have been. <laughs> and then I, I walk away after 45 minutes with Rabdo. <gasps> yeah. So that was he very painful. I and I, I was there for that. broken my back before. I have two crushed vertebrae, and that was probably one of the worst pains of my life. Rabbit my life is extremely painful. I've broken my and jaw. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I actually told him, don't do this second half of my workout. And I said, I got this. Yeah. I, I, said, <laughs> I said, don't do it. You're good. I can tell you already spent. <laughs> Happens all the time, but... And, and, I, and, and men. It, it really does. <laughs> no, you, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it, 100. And, and that's exactly what happened. I basically, we did a full workout. And then right after the workout, I remember exactly what we did. We did one minute on, one minute off for 20 minutes runs. That was the second part. That was the second part. part. Put you under. What was the first part? I don't remember that part. Oh, I know. We were rowing. It was so bad. Pull ups. It it was. Yeah. There was like four movements. Yeah, it, it was it was, it was brutal. How was I not there for this? Oh man, I missed out. On Jason that. was yeah. there. Yeah, Jason was there. Oh, okay. It's it probably was... better you don't have a liability later yeah. on because like, <laughs> oh, it's going to come out in a few more years. Like, yeah. oh, it's, your kidney is not processing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So I do remember doing form. that right after, and um, I remember him sitting in the truck. I, I went. I went inside. Corey's still in the truck, and I, I walked outside. I was like, "Dude, you're always like, yeah, I'm fine." <laughs> And then he walked, walked away. Next thing I know, I was in, not fine. in the ER. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. that is not good. I was not fine. Well, you know, one of the things is like owning a facility and being a coach is all that is your responsibility. It's on you. So if yeah. something happens to someone because you had a bad training plan, you pushed them too hard, that's on you. And that, yeah. that keeps me up at night. And people don't realize like how much of a worry that is to certain owners. And well, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That speaks to the importance, again, of having the right coach and having somebody that cares with a passion because you go into some gym that's worried about a head count or numbers or yeah. something like that. They're not going to have that same passion. They're not really – they're worried about that monthly payment coming in. Yeah, yeah I don't think people realize. Yeah, they don't realize the, respo- it won't sustain. the responsibility of it. Like mm-hmm. all these people with like training templates online and I'm selling this. and I was like, like, That's a big responsibility. And if you don't have background and knowledge and like ways of working with that ahead of time, like – I wouldn't take that on. 
Yeah. I, yeah, I think yeah. we have a culture of caution, <laughs> and it kind of comes from Rob down. And we have another uh, lead coach, Zach, who they are very similar in their in their approach. And um, all of our coaches aren't afraid to say, "Hey, you know, you're new. This is a little too much for you. You've got to scale it down." And 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 holding them to that because you know we want them to come back the next day. You know, nowadays yeah. the program looks so much different. Like when if you go to look at it, you if you haven't looked at what a CrossFit gym does, you would almost not know what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Maybe one or two days in a week, be like, "Oh, I kind of like that." Looks it, like that looks nice. familiar. Yeah, but- a lot of other, it's like a lot of different principles of other strength methods put in to help you be able to last and help you be able to handle a test of which we call CrossFit workouts twenty one fifty nines. I call them tests. Like we use a, oh, the method of mm-hmm. training and testing a lot. Um, like with anything, you can't test all the time. No. So no. if you test it every day. You're not, it's just not, you're not going to get any better. No. Yeah. Right. Cause um, yeah. So do you guys do a lot of mobility too, like yoga stuff um, or anything close to that? Not yoga, but um, mobility. Yeah. Yes. So I'm like a big, a big range of motion guy, like a, like a pattern reinforcer. Yeah. As far as you, you'll get yourself into a pattern, then you reinforce it with, with a movement that'll strengthen it. And that's kind of like how you can gain mobility. Like a lot of times yoga is great and I think it's a good add on or some of the other different kind of stretching modalities, but I look for stuff that has more real world application of what you're actually really going to move type of deal. I got you. Yeah. And mobility is strength under tension to being able to hold the proper positions and not being flexible. It's not the same yeah. thing. It's not the same thing. Yeah. It's totally it. yeah. Mm. Um, okay. As you guys have been 10 years in through all the process and evolving, have, what have been some of the major obstacles or setbacks not that you might have have come i wouldn't say that we've had setbacks but the ongoing um i'd say obstacle and i think with most gym owners is retention okay and i think it a lot of it is due to people have great intentions when they sign up and they think that just by joining a gym and working out and dedicating an hour a day they're gonna lose weight change their life whatever Mm -hmm. But then they're not addressing other lifestyle factors, um, especially nutrition. So that's funny. I wrote a question down for that more personal. So you guys probably get all these people coming in. You've got keto, paleo, plant based is making like a trend right now. I've seen that a lot more than it used to be. What do you tell them when they're when they're wanting just to, to grab anything, the whole th- all that different stuff? Do you guys have a set like basic? pitch without giving your nutritional secrets away it depends on the reasons why they're doing it or what they're looking Mm -hmm. like into it for yeah we um we we work with a registered dietitian so um we can do a lot more with within the laws of florida you know with someone Mm -hmm. like that which is very important exactly especially based on i just read recent case law about Mm -hmm. that dietitian they lost that case in the florida supreme court yeah people have been shut down to giving you, you can you can only say so much if you're not an RD, um, but we don't tell somebody they, you know, absolutely shouldn't be doing a certain diet. We'll find the reasons why. And um, so say somebody's a vegan, but they're a huge animal rights person. I'm not going to try to change their mind about that. Mm-hmm. But if they think, you know, maybe something that's incorrect, and we say, you know, let's, let's try this. Um, people want to do keto because they want to lose weight, but, we're of the mindset if you can't see yourself doing something for the rest of your life, it's not going to work. And um, so we try to teach them a little bit more about food composition and whatever diet you do. If you're looking to lose weight, if you're in a if in a, in a caloric deficit, it's going to work. But let's teach you correct habits and and uh, find out maybe your emotional reasons of why you are the way you are. I'm an emotional eater. I do know that. <laughs> I just love food. Uh, yeah. Well, you got to find what works for. You too, because a lot of times the diets that they're doing and whatever name they're using, what's actually going to work for them is not exactly what's been read or done research because everybody's individualized a little bit. So yeah. they, you almost have to kind of like almost like experiment with mm-hmm. someone that can guide you through it. Which is funny because like I've listened to a lot of uh, Rob Wolf or read a lot of those yeah. and, and they're always, it's always different. You have to experiment where people want that, that concrete answer. They want the, the, the magic pill, if you will. And it's, and it, you, there isn't one. It's and, and so individualized. It's so it's, it's test it, try you it learn out, different things eliminate too. it, bring it back. Yeah. It's just, it's a constant ebb and flow. And even over time, 
what did work for a year might all of a sudden you might you have to tweak and it doesn't work anymore. Or, You're getting older, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Metabolism changes. It changes a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. 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 That, for yeah. some people, a lot. Now, when you guys changed from CrossFit to Vero Strength, was that about that time when CrossFit was getting a lot of that negative connotation? Because I I know there was kind of you know out there in social media land and you know on the internet. Was, so was that part of the reason for it, or you already had like let's do this? Well, it was actually way further in time than I want. Like we were thinking about it for a long time and I didn't like getting roped in what everyone else was doing out there because I don't have the response. Like there's nothing I can do with what they, what they're doing. They're they're not doing the same thing. as me. And I wish I would have kind of second guessed the whole system like ahead of time, but that is part of the reason. The other part is it didn't show exactly what we were doing. We were only using principles at that point in time of CrossFit. So if I'm only using principles of it, which some of them are good and some of them I don't like, it, it doesn't tell the story of what's actually happening in the gym. And that's what I wanted to, to tell a little more of the story, what we are doing. Now, did you guys see like a downtick in membership at that point around that time or is it always? No, we been? actually saw more of interest from people that didn't want anything to do with CrossFit. Okay. It so kind of opened the horizon for yeah, you a little a, bit. Like right now, there's a lot of people in the facility that come in that don't do anything with a group class. I've almost no idea a little bit of what CrossFit is kind of. Mm-hmm. So, and that's what we wanted is to be appealing to a broader audience than that small, hardcore CrossFit audience, mm-hmm. which is a little yeah. disruptive actually to facilities. Yeah. So, so could a person just walk in and just use your equipment? Yeah, we do a lot of personalized programming. So they'll, they'll do the assessment, talk about goals and, um, may have to do some personal to learn the movements and how to move correctly. But then they uh, sign up with a coach and they're delivered their program to do on their own. They do it during our hours. And if they ever have questions, they can ask us. But yeah, we, we have quite a few people now that are on their own program. Okay. So, so no matter what though, um, whether it's personalized or group, always you have to do that um, onboarding process, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless they're, you already have a background in it before and we kind of took a look at you and you move and you have an education and there's stuff that you're paying from another coach somewhere or you're doing something, then that's fine. Okay. Now, um, what, what do you think of the concept? And, and this is something that actually stuck with me as well. Something that you wrote, I think on Facebook a long time ago, um, where people were saying like, I, I'm assuming people were saying, cause I, I just read your post and I was like, that makes a ton of sense. Cause you're just kind of open and honest about this. But um, I'm assuming that people were saying that it's easy for you because you're always able to just wake up and want to work out and you have that type A personality and you just were flat out. No, that's not true. Like that's not the case. Like I have to make myself. Yeah. I think that might've been about, um, nutrition too, because someone, you know, when you're helping someone, they're like, Oh, it's so easy for you. Uh, just because you know, you're in shape. But I mean, I, I told my story of being overweight until I was about 20, you know, I was probably like 40 pounds heavier, 50 pounds heavier than I am now. And then going the complete opposite direction and being like a hundred pounds because, you know, and having an eating disorder in college. So, you know, and you struggle with that kind of thing the rest of your life. So I put that out there and I, th- and a lot of people related to it and was like, okay. Because that know. appeals to a lot of people with understanding. And then, because you also get... The other thing is like, well, you've always kind of, well, from a young age, I dove into nutrition and different principles of working out and tried to learn as much as I can. And I've always been able to like understand how to do it and know it's not easy, but that doesn't relate to people as much as someone that has had an issue. And now you see them, they've lost weight and now they want to show other people how to do it, even though they don't have the background and haven't Mm -hmm. done it for a long period of time. So, and I, and I, I get it. But a lot of times people like a discount, the person that's actually known how to do things for a long period of time. And I think that lends itself to the sustainability. It's a lifestyle. You guys chose that from early on, Mm -hmm. which proves that if you can just be consistent with stuff and and tweak it as long as you go, then there's, there's, it's successful regardless. Even if, or if you're the person that was heavy and then lost it in two months, that's great. But are you going to sustain it? Like you guys have proved that long-term stay focused sustainability. So I think that's kind of, it's a lot easier yeah. to kind of sustain something than it is to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, for a lot of people, for them, it, that's the hard part is for them to try to get there. But once they get there, 
then you can kind of find a, like a good routine for yourself and sustain. And that's why you get like the yo-yo dieting or the, yeah. I'm in the gym from January to February and then I'm out and then I try again at the summertime is coming and then I'm out and it's just, it's like, correct. And that's probably part of the reason why we get hurt a lot. Yes. Yes. Right. I yes. mean, seriously, like if, if we, if you're consistent, you listen to your body, you probably won't get hurt as much. Well, the long game is always the way to play. Yeah, we have a six month contract requirement at the beginning of our of your gym membership, which is kind of unheard of in the CrossFit world. Yeah. Because we want the you know, we put a lot into people at the very beginning. So we want to, you know, make sure we'd rather, you know, not have your fundamentals fee if you're gonna leave in a month. You know, yeah, you make a little money, but in the long term It's really about them. Yeah, you're not working with them towards a goal. They left your gym and weren't successful, so then that's being talked about, you know, so. Yeah, so. no, that's interesting. Go ahead. So to speak to some of your programs, you guys have a lot of different ones. I know you have like the functional fitness is probably closer to your CrossFit style yeah. as much as you can. That's our general program. You have your sweat, which sounds like the cardio. And then you, you have uh, the structure, which I think it's looking more strongman, if I'm not mistaken. Well, or- it's actually, you use a lot of strongman principles and tools, okay. but it's to uh, address your imbalances. Okay. So the, the, the most, um, successful people in that program and they use it as an accessory accessory program. They're usually in functional fitness as well. And then maybe one day, two days a week, they'll do structure is the 40 to 50 year old woman. Okay. They really? They like to push, carry they sandbags love it. and they push love stuff it. around. They and, carry yeah. sandbags, awesome. bags, they push Strong sleds yeah. awesome. and you can <laughs> see the change in their posture in their hinging. And you know, it's in, it's nuts. I would think physically it's a change, but I bet in internally the empowerment that that oh, gives them as well. Like I'm moving this stuff that I never thought I could. Well, a lot of times with structure and like all the programs are blended into our main group program. So there's elements of it and we have different training phases that we mm-hmm. go through and it might have a little more, but you have like, and CrossFit's very skill dependent. So you get a lot of skill and strength from them, from it, like a structure and, and those elements of like strong man and sandbag gets you a lot of general strength. And if you snatch really heavy, that's great, but you got the skill of it. But if you can pick up a 200 pound sandbag and move it over here, you just strong. You just got that brute, strong that brute strength. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So you can yeah. do a lot of different things with that. Yeah. That makes sense. Now to the business side of it, you guys are married or. Yes. Um, how's that working? Living, obviously, um, you guys are together a lot, I guess. Yeah. Was that a strain on your like relationship at all when you guys started together all the time? No, I think at first we had to find our roles, Uh huh. you know, um, we have different personalities. I'm a little more type A than he is. And I different guess. skill sets. And that different helps skills. a lot too, yeah. because I can't do what she does and, and she can do what, what I do. I just do it a little more. Yeah. yeah. He I like, that was a great <laughs> answer, Rob. So that's, that shows that he's doing very well with this. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. Like you said, and I respect him for his knowledge and what he does and, I stay in my lane, but, well, we, I, but we talk about it a lot. Sometimes I'm like, all right, let's take an hour and not talk about work. Well, I think that speaks to a lot of people though, because, you know, even when he jumped in a hundred percent, you guys were both in a hundred percent, you know, I mean, if you're a couple and you know, you're together in whatever way, you know, if I get into something, if I get into podcasting a hundred percent, you know, my wife's into it as well. You know, she might not be in this room, but she's in it, you know? Um, so finding your different roles and being able to address that is definitely, I can see how that makes everything life a lot easier. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. So we live, oh, so we, we live in a community, right? Or in a, in a city that is, has a lot of older people. What, what are your thoughts on those folks joining your program? We have a lot of them. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Okay. Has anybody surprised you? Like you're like, whoa. Okay. 70. Absolutely. We have a 77 year old woman that loves to lift weights. She comes in only on weightlifting days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she's very tiny okay. and she has gotten so strong. Had okay. she ever done it before or was it brand new, like a brand new experience to her? She had done CrossFit at um, a gym that's no longer in business um, with her daughter and was kind of hurting from it. Okay. And then we just slowed it down. Let's just get strong. Let's, you know, let's make you lunge correctly. I mean, her balance is one of the biggest things you've seen improve. Um, definitely strength, but yeah, she, she loves it now. She's completely consistent and, um, I don't see her 
quitting. No. no. Now, do you get a, a lot of people that are like new to fitness in general, haven't been to a gym at all? Like I'm going to get into this is brand new. I've never, never been an athlete in high school, never been anything. And they're just stepping into this whole community. Sometimes that's better too. Cause they don't have a bad habits. Of, yeah. Bad habits. Oh yeah. I have a lot of bad habits. <laughs> and Probably a lot more. of, especially the guys that were really into bodybuilding and did like a lot of bench. And, they're usually you know, the toughest too. Yeah. They don't have shoulder mobility and they want to do everything, but they shouldn't yet. They're and they come in with like strength. a lot of strength. And what happens when you walk in with strength, it like allows you to do things wrong. And yeah. it also, a lot yeah. of times that mentality has an ego with it oh, what, what other and that gets checked at the door very quickly when you get into those other functional fitness where it's more technique. It's not always about strength. It's the technique where you said the 70 year old is lifting stuff. So I think you, it, I've always loved the fact that it, you learn so much about your physical ability, but there's so much about your mental and that ego side of things that you learn about and grow as, which yeah, is older people, powerful. you see a, a, a pretty fast adaptation. So she's, you know, feels a sense of accomplishment because she can see, whereas someone that's strong and they're, you know, a stud at a globo gym and they come in, but they don't know how to produce power or do these other things kind of knocks their ego a little bit. And it's a little more frustrating. And some of them love are up for the challenge and then others aren't. I was going to say like, like from what I remember, um, that actually, because you did get checked at the door kind of doesn't, if your ego is hurt that bad, typically I do see some people not sticking with it, right? Yeah, well, the the programs that were out there before, and we kind of fell into that, that would happen uh, much more often. But nowadays, the way the program, it, it kind of brings them along, and then there's only a few of the tests that we do in a week. And so they might get hammered a little bit, but then they're doing a lot of other stuff that they can relate to from a gym or looks so, somewhat familiar. And you have a lot of options, too, with your different programs Correct. that can help kind of blend it all and find them. So – as we kind of come wrap up, one thing we ask, we try to ask everybody and I'd like to get an answer from both of you. It could, you might just ditto it, but we always try to, we want everybody to share the one thing that they could leave that somebody that's listening could put into practice without it being a, a massive undertaking or a financial burden or anything like that. What would be something that, whether it's fitness related, nutritional, maybe just lifestyle that somebody can go or business related, however you, whatever popped into your mind that you could share with our listeners that. You know that would benefit them that they could put into place tomorrow when they if they heard it and kind of move forward as a, a better life. That's just kind of a loaded question. It could kind of go any direction. So um, I would say sleep more and have a, a routine, um, especially if you're over forty. Your ho- hormones get very affected by a lack of sleep, um, and then sleeping. I mean, you might have to, in order to get to bed every night, you know turn off the electronics an hour before bed, start reading, uh, create a breathing practice, that sort of stuff. But so I think if you can prioritize sleep, um, a lot of other things will kind of fall into place. So sleep with kind of, and then a routine, routine sounds like that would be a very beneficial. Yeah. And it's something everybody can do. Okay. Um, yeah. Rob, you got one for us? Yes. Yeah, she stole mine. Okay. I love to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go with the nutrition real quick. If they would just read the labels, mm and see what, what is actually in it. When they turn around and one thing that's similar and it only has a small sentence compared to something that has a paragraph, you might want to go with the small sentence. Okay. So that's kind of, if they would just do that, a lot of times they wouldn't pick things and eat it. Yeah. That's pretty simple too. And I think it speaks volumes. If you just say, read the labels, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, like, yep. Yep. you'd be I, very surprised. I, I do have one more question mm-hmm. and it's probably selfish, but um, in regards to, Children, kids. Yes. Right. What is the right age? Is there a right age for them to start fitness, lifting? So, like, there's a lot of research out there. You can start them young, lifting weights and stuff. But the younger age, you want to start them with more like athletic movements of jumping and and kind of moving around. And then as they get a little older, preteens, then you start adding weights in it. That's kind of like where we we sit. Like our younger kids. Most of their like lifting weights would be like just picking something up or just moving around, maybe a med ball and a lot of jumping around and playing games. And then as they start getting older and start going into the, like there's a middle route, like teens, then you can start adding weights, a little more complex movements and, and things like that. Okay. Just proper movement mechanics. Yeah. That's the one thing you having reinforce. Having fun, making them, Make them look fall in love with to, the fitness. Yeah. Look forward to fitness. Yeah. Because you'd be surprised like if the, if the kids have not done any kind of athletic endeavors earlier and they start coming in, their movements 
you you can't believe they can move that way. Right. Like yep. spines and different things that we see should not move like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and for okay. our listeners, where can they find you guys? You can find us online at uh, verostrength.com or Instagram and Facebook at Vera Strength. All right. Awesome. All right. We yeah. thank you guys for coming on. Thanks we appreciate all the knowledge yeah. you've dropped on us and awesome. uh Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, you can find us at fullgrillalife at gmail.com. And if you want to follow us on social media and see what's going on in our neck of the woods, you can follow us on Instagram at Full Gorilla Life, at Facebook at Full Gorilla Life, and on Twitter at Gorilla Full, like beautiful, but with a gorilla. And do not uh, forget to hit subscribe on your app, podcast app of choice, if I learn how to talk. Anyways, thanks. I really appreciate you guys Thank coming you. on. Thank you guys a lot. Guys. Yeah. All right. Later.